I'm going to speak to you now about centripetal acceleration and force. What it means to be centripetal is center seeking. So we're going to talk about this. I like this EO one here, the circular motion problem in physics it really threw me for a loop. So we're going to talk about this, what it means to go in a circle and what it does. So I want you to remember though that acceleration, the very base definition of acceleration, we actually write it like this. So right? we could say that acceleration, uh, let's get a pen here. We could say the acceleration, which is a vector, is going to be given by the uh, change in velocity over time. This is how it is. Now keep in mind, look at this very, very carefully here. This is fundamental. Because remember, acceleration is a vector. And something that's a vector has a direction and a magnitude. So we're here saying you have to change your velocity in some way. Now, we're used to changing the magnitude. In other words, we're used to seeing questions uh, like from mechanics, you know, where you've got um, a speed actually changing, you know, so you go from like, I don't know, 100 kilometers an hour to five kilometers an hour. So it's like the length of that vector has changed. But it turns out, right, so of course, so yes, if that changes, you do accelerate. But we can also say that if you change the direction of the velocity, you also accelerate. And this is the case with going in a circle. So that's why I'm saying here we change the direction here. So for example, if you look at this, the change in direction, that's a constituted change in velocity, so there is acceleration. And a lot of you have trouble sort of understanding that, so I want to try to give you this sort of uh, way to visualize it. Imagine you had a ball, uh, like a sphere, and it's on the ground, it's on a nice level surface, and you just push the ball in a line. And do you see it's going to go in a straight line as long as it's, uh, you know, not a, not a really wobbly one or as long as it's all nice and even and spherical? It should go in a nice straight line. Think about this. If you're only allowed to give it short little pushes, you know, you can sort of apply a little impulse, we would say, right? That makes it change its momentum. So let's say you just apply a little, like a little push, a little force. You kind of, boom, you just you know, sort of hit it lightly. If you wanted that ball to go in a circle, how would you do it? Imagine this, this ball is going straight up, let's say. You could give it a little tap that way to left, and then maybe another tap that way, and then another tap that way, and another tap. Can you see each way you tap it? Imagine which way you have to hit it. Think about which way you'd have to hit it. You'd have to hit it, you know, this way. Then it would be going that way, and then you'd have to hit it that way, and that way. Look at which way your force is. Isn't your force always acting towards the center? That's why we call it centripetal. Centri means center seeking. That's what this means. This is center. All right, the American style with the ER like this, center seeking. That's what center centripetal means. This is because as you go around in a circle, there's technically a center force. If there's a center sort of forcing, uh, sorry, um, directed force, do you see there's also a center acceleration? I mean, that's better to put the acceleration. So you're going to have an acceleration inwards. It doesn't seem like it, but you're actually going to have a center pointing acceleration here. Okay, and that's because, again, you've changed your velocity. So even though your value of your speed stayed the same, you know, so imagine you have just, you know, V here. So the actual length of that vector stayed the same at all points in this thing that here is motion. That's assuming you're going to the right, like, uh, like this, counterclockwise. You could say that, well, the value of the speed doesn't change. Maybe you're going like, uh, I don't know, eight meters per second all the time. But your direction is changing because of that you have an acceleration. And the good news is, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't have to uh, memorize this. You have an equation for the centripetal, see the center seeking, acceleration. It goes like this, A equals V squared over R. So again, don't have to memorize it. There it is. What does this do for you? Um, I like to label it with a little C. C for centripetal is technically a vector, but uh, we'll leave it like that. So acceleration is in meters per second squared. Linear speed, I hope you see, is in meters per second. And radius is in meters. So hopefully you'll see that if you do linear speed, which is meters per second, you square it, you get meters squared per second squared. Uh, and then you have uh, meters on the bottom, so then this becomes meters per second squared. So the units work out. Let's look at centripetal force. To do the force, you just use Newton's second law on the acceleration. And remember, the acceleration was just, remember, acceleration was V squared over R. Well, isn't Newton's second law 
I mean, one of the formulations, of course, it's with a change in momentum. You know, you could say that F is, uh, it's related to a, a change in momentum. But in this case, let's use uh, the other form, probably the more common one, which is F equals MA. That means all you have to do to get the force, you just multiply the acceleration times the mass. So in this case right here, then, does that make sense? Then I would say then, fine, F equals MA. So that means I would multiply mass times acceleration, which would be mass times V squared over R. So that's why I end up with, very, very simply, F equals MV squared over R. So you just take your acceleration that you had before, V squared over R, and you just multiply it by an M. That's not that brain busting, right? I hope not. So there we go, there's our, our equation. And again, just to make sure we know, centripetal force. This is the force acting towards the center. It's measured in newtons, mass is in kilograms, speed is in meters per second, and the radius is in meters, just so we have all the right units. And what I like is this, you can see this, because from before we have V equals omega R. In other words, we have the angular speed is related to the linear speed. Here we've been talking about linear speed, right, in meters per second. So because of that, look, we can replace, we can say F equals M, and instead of V squared, we put in omega r squared. Do you see that? This is this is v according to this. So because of that I have m and then v squared, so that's omega r, so therefore I have f equals, let's see, it leads to f equals m, and look at this, I have omega squared r squared over r. And if I have r squared divided by r, that one cancels out that one, so I'm left with just f equals m omega squared r. Hey, look. And remember that omega is your angular speed, which is in radians per second. So do you see, actually, it's not that, that bad. Um, now I have an example for you. Maybe that's a good one to have. So we're looking at here, uh, we have a radius. Um, and we have the radius of the Earth. So it's 6.4 times 10 to, 10 to the 6 meters. Okay, so that's important. So maybe I'll just write it down. So R equals this. I just didn't really like the notation of the font I'm using. So this is more clear, right? Maybe not, I guess my six looks terrible. There we go, I'll make it better. Six meters. What's a centripetal acceleration? Uh, do the spinning earth experienced. Oops, I should have really made it experienced, shouldn't I? Uh, so I'll just fix that right now, hold on a second here. I just don't want to be uh, too many spelling mistakes at least. There we go. So what I want to do here, here I need to sort of figure out, yeah, kind of what to do. So. If I have a centripetal acceleration, I can actually figure this out. Um, I can find the acceleration itself. We have an equation for it, don't we? We have the equation right here. Acceleration is V squared over R. So we're going to put that in. So we're going to have, so fine. We have the acceleration then. I'll use this equation here. Acceleration is just V squared over R. Now I know R, which is really good, but I don't know V, do I? But it turns out I kind of do. You can kind of figure it out because you can say that V is a distance over time. Remember V is your linear speed. So because of that, V is your distance over time. But dist over time. And remember, if you go all the way around in a circle, what's your distance traveled? It's a circumference of a circle, which is two times pi times r. All that divided by, usually we say t for the period of orbit. So in this case, then it becomes v squared, which is two pi r over t, that's v, and then square that divided by r. So it may not look that nice, so we can figure it out again. So e, a equals, let's see, two squared is four times pi squared times r squared over t squared. I divide that whole thing by r. Now, some people like to write this. I can write it as a you know a fraction. So just so you can see, that means when you divide by a fraction, what do you do? You multiply by the reciprocal. I'm just trying to make it more obvious to see what happens. Some people really struggle with this and putting the r on the bottom. So that's just why it becomes like a one over r. So you're gonna see this r cancels out that one. So I'm left with acceleration is just equal to um, four pi squared r over t squared. Now this equation, this four pi squared r over t squared, turns out we've sort of re-derived an equation that's actually in your formula booklet. So I mean, you didn't actually have to do all this work right here that I did. You could have just looked this up and said, oh, a is four pi squared r over t squared. Fine. Now remember, this is this is for someone who's sitting on earth, who's basically rotating around the earth like this, right? So uh, what do we do now? 
Well, we need to know the period for someone on the Earth, right? We need to know how long does it take to go all the way around the Earth. And you might know that number, so maybe we'll do this in a different color here. So let's just figure this out here. So what's uh, how long does it take to go all the way around the Earth? Do you know that value of t? I hope you do. It's 24 hours. But now we need this in seconds, so what do we do? We use a trick that I learned in chemistry. Um, so I just want to get rid of the hours. So I'm going to put hours on the bottom. This way they're going to cancel out. But I need to think about um, what will this do for me. I need to know something per hour. In this case, I know there's 60 minutes in one hour. So now I know, uh, that's why I put the minutes on top, because it's 60 minutes for one hour. And if I do uh, 24 times 60, then I'm going to get my answer in minutes. But I don't want it in minutes, I want it in seconds. So you can use the same sort of trick here that, you know, the minutes are here. You're going to have, whoops, minutes here. So the minutes will cancel out, and then you'll have seconds. So then in the end, you're going to end up with uh, this right here, which is 24 times 3600, which is... Uh, 86400. Zero, zero. Technically, you should use a sidereal tape, but good enough. Uh, this here is in seconds. So this is my T. So what I'm going to do now is put all this stuff into the equation. So finally, I have A equals 4 pi squared times the radius, which is uh, 6, 4, oops, 0. 0.4 times 10 to the 6. All that divided by this number. So it's uh, 86,400 seconds. That thing has to be squared. And I'm going to get my answer. So let's see if we can figure it out. So um, I'm just going to do that. So 6.4 times 10 to the 6. All that times 4 times pi squared. I get that answer. I divide that by, in brackets, 86400. I end up with an acceleration of 0 0.0338, something like that. So how many significant figures can I use? Can I see I use two? So I'm going to say, therefore, that my A equals, um, I guess, a 0. Point, I mean, you could say just 0 0.03, for example, meters per second squared. You can say that's your answer. So think about this. This is very little compared to what we feel on Earth, right? I mean, uh, by gravity. So this is a, yes, there's a slight acceleration inwards, but it's not very big, is it? We feel uh, the acceleration due to gravity a lot more. But that's actually pretty interesting to figure out uh, what happens. So this is how we can deal with a question that might seem really hard, but it turns out we can solve it by just doing a little bit of algebra and a little bit of magic. And like I said, you can actually save a lot of uh, time if you're worried about this whole piece right here by just starting off right away with A equals 4 pi squared, R over T squared. You just have to know the period, how long it takes to go around the Earth.